Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another episode of Adobe Illustrator Tutorial. I am Mr. Gratzel, and today we're gonna to talk about the brush and the blob brush tool. The brush and the blob brush tool are similar in how you use them when you're creating a work of art, but they do two very distinct things. And we're gonna look at that in our tutorial today. We may even have a bonus tool on this one. So let's go ahead and jump in and start working with the brush and the blob brush tool. The brush tool is located over in the tool panel and you can identify really quickly because it looks like a paintbrush. That's the symbol for the brush tool. As I hover over it, you'll see that the name pops up, right? Paintbrush tool. And there's a B in parentheses. The B is the shortcut. So I can easily click the letter B on my keyboard to jump to the brush tool. I'm going to talk a lot about shortcuts uh, in this video and other ones as well, because it's really important to learn the shortcuts for all these different tools. I've talked about them in the past as well. The shortcuts just help increase your productivity and your workflow. It, it kind of cuts down on time instead of having to go back to the toolbar every time it change tools. If you know the shortcuts, you can jump to them really quickly. So you'll see the cursor for the brush tool is a paintbrush and the kind of the brush part of it is black, right? And you see a little circle around that. It's really important to know that because when we switch the blob brush tool, that changes slightly. So you'll see the little difference. So it's a paintbrush with a black brush tip. And then the circle there represents the area, the space that I will be drawing with, like how big that uh, is going to be. So what the brush tool does is it draws vector paths. So if I were to draw a line here, you can see I switch to my selection tool and I click and you can see I've got my bounding box, but you'll see the red line or the red path on the inside of it. This lets me know that I have drawn a vector path or a stroke. And you'll notice too, when I select on it now, all I have up here in my control panel is just the stroke color and no fill color. Because with the brush tool, you're only creating the outline stroke path. So I'm gonna switch back, hit B, switch back to my brush tool, actually, I'm going to click off of that real quick. Now switch to my brush tool again. And one thing I want to show you, you've got that little circle around the brush tool. So right now it's making a one point stroke weight. I can increase that manually and go to eight or seven or whatever I want to do. Let's see if I click five and you'll notice, see how that circle around my brush cursor just got bigger. So I can change the weight of the stroke just like I would on a shape, but I can do it with my brush as well. So I can click here and I can change that up and go to one point. I can go all the way down to 0.25, make it really tiny, whatever I need to. So that's one quick way to do that. The other way to do it, and this is kind of the shortcut, and it allows you to have a little bit more control over the size of the brush, the square bracket keys on your keyboard. The one on the right increases and the one on the left decreases the size of that brush. So you can see that circle gets a little bit bigger and a little bit smaller. So this is really nice way to incrementally increase and decrease the size of your brush. So that might come in handy when you're doing illustrations and you want to change the weight of your outlines or your drawing. So I can now draw that stroke and I can decrease the size a little bit smaller, or I can go even bigger just like that. So really quickly with those brackets, I can increase and decrease the size of that brush stroke weight. Again, you can also do the drop down menu, but the shortcut, it just gives you a little bit more control. Next, I'm going to show you the blob brush tool and the blob brush tool is hidden underneath the brush tool. Remember any tool that has this little triangle is a symbol letting you know there's other tools hidden behind it. So if I click and hold on that, the little fly out box pops out and you can see I've got another tool, the blob brush tool hidden right below it. Shift B is the shortcut for the blob brush tool. So I'm going to click on that, but that's something to remember. So I hold down shift and hit B. It'll switch me to the blob brush tool. And if you look at my cursor, you'll notice it's same symbol of a brush, but now the brush part of it is white. So I'm going to click B and switch to my brush tool. You see, there it is, the brush tool with the black brush. Shift B, 
switch to my blob brush, that brush is now white. So that's something that helps you identify which tool you're working with because they kind of, they look the same. And when you work with them, they kind of flow the same way. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to try to replicate and draw the same shape now, but with the blob brush tool. Now, of course, the weight's a little bit thicker, right? But I'm going to switch, hit V for my selection tool. And you'll see here, so when I did the brush tool, I had that vector path on the inside. When I select this on my blob brush tool, you can see now that line is on the outer edges because I have just made a shape. I'm actually going to switch to my direct selection tool, hit A, and you can see all the anchor points on the outside. So now it's left these anchor points because this is one solid shape, not a stroke like this one above. So that is the difference between the brush and blob brush. The brush does the vector path stroke and the blob brush creates an open or full shape. So that is really helpful when you're doing illustrations. You can do the brush tool and create your outlines and then switch to your blob brush tool to create the fill colors. Now, one thing I want to show you too, the blob brush tool is actually a very smart tool. So I'm going to make my brush stroke a little bit bigger using my bracket and I have the same fill color. And that's another thing to notice too, how the color went from, remember we were on the brush tool, the stroke was filled and then the fill color was had the little line through it saying there's no color. Once I use the blob brush tool, that switches because now we're creating a fill shape. So I'm going to draw a line right through this shape. And when I select my selection tool and I click on this, remember I said the blob brush tool is smart. What it's done is it recognizes that I used the same color. So what it did is it actually merged or united those two shapes. So my original shape plus that line that I just drew through it, it merged them into one shape. Switch that direct selection tool so you can see that, those anchor points. So it's smart. It knows, hey, if I've got the same color, I need to merge these things together. So let me switch colors. Oh, actually, before I do that, let me click off of the object. All right, I'm going to switch to my blob brush tool, and I'm going to switch to yellow. I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to scribble right over this. Okay. Click on my selection tool. Oop, I want to isolation mode there. But I click on this shape and I pull it. You can see they are two separate shapes. Even so, and when I go to my layers panel and I open up this layer here, my sub layers, you can see it actually creates a new sub layer. Right, that's selected. There's my little identifier right there for that shape. And this one is now one shape. Right, it's one group together shape because it was smart enough. If I switch back my blob brush tool, actually let me select off of it first. Blob brush tool, you can see it's switched back to black. I color this in and I go to my selection tool. And I select it and it just jumps in and adds those two together. And even in my layers panel, it has grouped those together as one big shape. So that is a really nice feature. So you can easily switch between colors and color right over shapes. And it will have those separated for you. So that is a really awesome feature to have with the blob brush tool. I'm going to give you a little bonus here today. I'm going to talk a little bit about the eraser tool as well, because it really comes in handy when using the brush and the blob brush tool. So the eraser tool allows you to erase parts of a vector shape fill. It also allows you to erase parts of an outline, but it doesn't have the same look and effect, and that can throw people off sometimes. So let me give you an example. I'm going to use the ellipse tool, and I'm going to draw a circle here. And I've got my outline increase that stroke way a little bit so we can see it. Okay, so I've got my vector shape drawn. And my eraser tool is this symbol right here. It's kind of this black square with a little white tip on it to show like an eraser. It's right below the brush tool. So if I go ahead and click on that, if I try to erase this circle, that's just a stroke, there's no fill color, it's just the outline. What happens is it just moves that line a little bit, pushes that line in. So if I were to draw inside that, it creates this, I'm erasing it, but it's actually just creating the outline edge, right? It's just the outline, it's the stroke there. So what I've erased away 
it's showing that outline, right? So if I wanted to show that fill and what I've erased out, if I select that and I switch the colors here from the stroke to the fill, now you can see I can erase those pieces out. But that kind of throws people off sometimes and they erase and like, hey, how come mine's looking like that? Or if I've got the stroke there, let's see if I use my brush tool and I draw my circle, right? If I use that eraser tool, now you can erase a part of it. So you can do that with the brush tool, but when you've got an enclosed shape with the vector, then it doesn't work, right? Then it kind of, it's a closed off shape. So it's just pushing that edge. If you just have the brush tool that's got a line going through here and you want to erase a certain part of it, you can do that because it's open, it's not closed, right? That's the key thing. If it's closed, it's gonna push those edges in like we saw with that circle, okay? So those are just some things to think about. With the blob brush tool, again, because we're making a vector shape, it's very similar to when we switch the colors of the ellipse. If I switch to my erase tool, I can clean that up and make nice hard edges and it just erases that shape, not a big deal. Right, So it's a really cool little feature to erase those things out really quickly. So why would that come in handy? Why would we need that? Well, over here, I got this kind of little flower shape here. So let's say I use my brush tool and I drew this out with my brush tool. What I would do then is I would keep all these outlines on its own layer, which I've done over here in my layers panel. I've got it labeled flower, right? And then I would create a new layer and I would make sure that layer is below it. So my outlines are on top and now I'm going to use my blob brush tool and I'm going to switch over. Yeah, maybe it's a little sunflower. We're going to play around with some colors and add different things in here. And I'm going to just kind of fill in some of these petals. Now you could zoom in really close and try to be really precise and make sure the colors are in there, but you can see I'm being a little loose with it, right? I'm just kind of painting through it. Right, and it kind of goes over the edge a little bit, and I'm all right with that for now because I've got the eraser tool, right? So I can use the erase tool to clean up some of the stuff that's in there that goes over the edge. So I can switch to my erase tool, and I can come in here and just clean that up right along my edges, just like that. So if you're like me, I prefer to get a little messier and then come back through and clean up my edges a little bit. Um, some people like to zoom in real close and maybe be more precise and go to that brush tool and make sure they're right along the edge. And you can totally do that. Um, but it's also good to know just in case you do go a little too far and you got something like that, that you can use the erase tool real quickly to just clean up that edge. So those are just kind of the fundamental basics of the brush, the blob brush, and a bonus, the erase tool in Illustrator. Until next time, I'm Mr. Gratzel.